How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Views and in today's video we are checking out the filaments from the MakerBox subscription service. This is a 3D printing subscription box which you get once a month and it comes with several exotic filaments you can try out on your 3D printer at home. So the really really cool thing about this service is you can try out expensive exotic filaments without committing to a whole roll. And if you like them, you can actually get discounts thanks to the guys at MakerBox. So they set this to me at the start of the month and I've finally had the time to test out all the filaments within and design a really neat little file that you can use at home to test out filaments of your own. Let's get started. Welcome back guys. As I said, MakerBox is a subscription service once a month for 3D printing filament and I have already opened this and tested these filaments, but let's go through and show you what they sent me. So first we're starting with this. This is buzzed. This is a PLA plastic with remnants from beer manufacturing or the byproducts of beer manufacturing put into filaments. So it's a really unusual material and personally I think it looks like peanut butter which is a cool look. So the cool thing that MakerBox does is they have all the print settings they recommend for testing out the filaments because every filament will be different and when you're testing new filaments you only have like 50 grams to test so you want to make sure you get the most out of it. So it says here hot end temperatures 180 to 210 degrees, bed temp 45 degrees or not needed and speed 30 to 60 millimeters per second. And it says it uses typical PLA settings, but 10 degrees cooler than you would normally. So that means to me is this is a pretty low melting point PLA and I was worried a little bit about stringing, but as you'll see in my print, that wasn't really a big deal for me. And the next filament was APLA or advanced PLA from 3D Fuel. And you'll notice that there's nothing in the bag anymore because I've kind of misplaced my sample, but I do have this. This is a one kilo roll of black APLA from 3D Fuel. So 3D Fuel is a very high quality made in America filament and I've tested it out before and I found it to be f superb, superb quality. So the, the printing recommendations on the APLA um, satchel, I suppose you'd call it, is a hot end temp of 190 to 230 degrees C. So maybe a little bit hotter than regular PLA settings. Bed temp of 45 degree or not needed. I don't think you need it at all for this sort of PLA. Speed 30 to 60 millimeters per second. And a tip is the parts can be annealed in an oven for between 80 to 130 degrees C for an hour to increase the strength of the part. Now I have not done this personally, but there is now some cool filaments on the market that allow this feature to increase strength, but also to increase temperature resistance. And next we have Engen from Colorfab. So Engen is a very special filament that Colorfab has developed in correlation with Amphora. And it's, it's essentially like, prints like a PET or a PETG, but it has its own special properties. It's designed specifically for 3D printing. So recommended settings of 220 to 240 degrees C, bed temperature of 75 to 85 degrees C. Now this surprised me as most PETs, they recommend a lower bed temperature because of the quite low plastic deformation temperature, sorry, plastic transition temperature, where it will start softening at quite a low temperature compared to, for example, ABS. Now this is quite a high bed temp, and I'll go into a few issues I had printing with Engen, but essentially it's saying best results are achieved with a heated platform. I would say you probably are gonna struggle printing this without a heated platform. And the final filament sample in the box was cork fill. And I don't know where the satchel for that has gone. There is too much mess in this room, but here it is on a roll. So you'll notice in all of these samples, they come loose. Well, they came with little zip ties around them that you can undo, but there's, there's no spools or anything here. So the guys at MakerBox do recommend a printable spool, which you can use the cardboard box that it comes with to make a spool. And I actually did print parts for it. So these are parts that you can join into a cardboard box. Um, but to be honest, I have so many empty spools lying around, I ended up just threading it onto older spools and this worked great for me. All right then, so now we need something small and quick to print and this is Maker's Muse. I don't just download things off Thingiverse, I design my own files and what I have here is a Maker's Muse coin. So the whole idea behind this, and I took a long time to, to come to this realization, is I wanted something small. I was gonna do something like a torture test, but smaller, but that, you know, we're not trying to torture the filaments. We just want a small swatch, essentially, of a filament. And yeah, I, I tested this out on this. This is Polymax uh, PLA. It's a nice 
light baby blue color and it seemed to work really well. So I went with this file and decided to use it for my tests and I'm going to be doing this for all of my future filaments I test and adding them to the Maker's Muse filament vault where I can put little notes on what I used for settings, what printer and what filament it was and put them away so if I ever come back to wanting to know oh what filament was this, what color was it, I can match it to the swatch. So that's the idea behind it and I'll put a link to download this file in the video description so if you want to check it out and want to test it and want to use it yourself it'll be completely free to download off Gumroad. All right, so with that out of the way, let's start with possibly the most basic filament in this box, the APLA from 3D Fuel. So it was a nice blue color, actually quite glossy, more glossy than I expected off an APLA because the whites and blacks I have are actually quite a matte color, at least on the roll. So it printed very well. I used the up box, and I set the temperatures to 230 degrees C, which is quite hot for, for PLA, but the up box seems to work better at hotter temperatures. I don't know why but the results are great. There is a little bit of stringing, and again, that's probably the higher temperature I used. But in terms of the infill, it's fantastic, and the part just, yeah, works great. So this is gonna be a very nice premium PLA for anyone wanting parts that look really good and have a higher strength, but you need to do the annealing process, which I have not done for this, but it's something I'm gonna try in the future. And next we have the cork fill. So I printed this off on the M150 from Hobby King, the Malian M150. And I actually printed that off the standard Mark 10 extruder, printing at 1,800 millimeters per minute, which is 30 millimeters per second. I did increase the flow multiplier to one versus 0.9, and it printed pretty nice. There was maybe a little bit of dags, and uh, I do regret using blue tape at the bottom because it has stuck into the filament, uh, that first layer, and I can't get it off. But yeah, overall, with my previous experience with these wood filled PLAs and that sort of thing, it printed nice. And the smell was actually, you know, still smells, it doesn't smell as MDF like as other wood filaments I've tried. It actually smells pretty pleasant. And next, NGen. So I did say I had issues with printing this, and yeah, it's a weird material. So I have very little experience with printing PETs, and in my experience with trying to print them, they have a weird mix of PLA and ABS settings. So I was originally trying to print this on the up box using PLA settings and temperature modifying them with the up hack and it would not extrude for me at all. I had, had zero success extruding, it would just jam every time. So then I changed to an ABS setting and then modified it from there to a 240 degree temperature. But I did set the first, degree, first layer at 260 degrees to help it stick down. And I think it needed that for the up box. I don't know about other printers, but something I did notice is getting the raft off. So this is a very unusual experience for me. The raft was extremely brittle. And when I say extremely brittle, I had to use safety glasses to remove it because it was exploding like violently sharp, brittle shards. And that was very unexpected because I expected this being a copolymer, to, I just caught that pretty well, to be actually quite quite flexible and indeed the plastic itself you can't really crack it so it must be something when it's being extruded at a higher temperature it must become quite quite brittle if you extrude it at too high a temperature and I do remember Joel over at 3D Printing Nerd telling me something similar so this is a silver look engine and it does look pretty cool it sort of has that space age futuristic metal look but I don't know if it's a filament I'm going to be buying myself I didn't really enjoy using it and last but certainly not least was the buzzed filament. So I'm going to be honest here, I thought this filament was a bit of a joke. I mean, come on, filament made from beer, you know, waste from the process of brewing beer and then put into PLA, like what? But it actually printed really, really nice. This has the best surface finish of any of the other prints I've done except maybe the Polymax test I did and that is high quality PLA. So I'm not sure what the additives are, what byproducts they actually are adding from beer. It does not smell like beer. It doesn't smell like Vegemite, which is supposedly originally from the byproducts of beer as well. But it does have a slight smell to it. It's mostly when it's printing. It's not unpleasant, but it's certainly not like beer. I don't know how to, how to describe it. But it does look like it looks like peanut butter to me. It looks like delicious, to be honest. It looks like you should eat it. Like maybe caramel or peanut butter or maybe something in between. But this print is the best of the lineup. It has no stringing detail issues. And I did extrude this at 210 degrees C on the up box using the hack on PLA settings. 
and it had a raft which broke away beautifully. And yeah, I, I might actually get myself a roll of this because it has a really cool look to it and I could see this being cool to use in a lot of projects. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on the MakerBox subscription service for filaments. Uh, the guys are pretty cool there and they actually allowed me to put in a affiliate code essentially. So if you enter Makers Muse when you sign up, you will get 15% off your first box and I get a small kickback. So if you're interested in joining up with this subscription service, definitely consider using that code because it will help me out a lot. And I do enjoy experimenting with weird filaments. You get 50 grams with each sample and that's enough to print quite a lot actually. I haven't used much at all. And you can see how much, how much engine I have left. Didn't really like the engine. But you do have enough filament to do something fairly decent. You don't have to be worried about printing a tiny Marvin and then running out. You do get enough in the box to try some things. And yeah, in terms of being blown away, that buzz stuff, man. I mean, for a, a filament that is made out of beer and kind of tongue in cheek, it printed beautifully. I guess it's sort of like the, the, the coffee filament that, that uh, Protopasta made. You know, everyone's like, oh, you know, a bit of a joke, but apparently that printed well and I, I never got to test it. But I did enjoy printing with this buzz filament. If you wanna see future 3D printing videos and tips, reviews, tips and tricks, all that kind of thing, it's been a long day, definitely consider subscribing to Makers Muse, guys. It helps me out a huge amount. And also I do have a Patreon where you can see various perks for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. It helps me do this full time. And look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Here's the latter half of the 20th century. A man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. 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 He has actually walked in space. Thank you.